All right, so this is the video training for using a scoreboard for game managers and supervisors on a basketball court. So first we're gonna show uh, how to set the main clock. So there's this button down here that says set main clock. We're gonna hit that button and then we're gonna click 20 minutes. And as you can see here on the, on the display, it shows 20 minutes. And at that point, when it looks good, we click enter. And at that point, you can now see up on the scoreboard, we have 20 minutes set. So we're gonna be using 20 minutes for each of the first and second halves. And if we go to overtime in playoffs, it'll be three minutes. But that's how you set the time to start the game after half or, or whatever you're gonna have. The next thing I'd like to show you is to, how to count team fouls. So team fouls are obviously listed under guests or they're listed under home. And so to add a team foul, it's simply you're just gonna add the button team foul one. So say this is the guest and they have uh, three team fouls in the half and the home team has one team foul in the half. That's where you're gonna mark the team fouls on the scoreboard, so right here. So every time there's a foul, whether that be an offensive foul, defensive foul, technical foul, intentional foul, any type of foul gets marked here so they can see it on the board. And as you can see on the board, we marked three and one, and the fouls are designated underneath the home and guest scoreboard. All right, now the reason that we do the fouls is just to communicate to the officials when we're close to the seven team fouls or the 10 team fouls when they'll be shooting the bonus. So that's team fouls. Next thing I'd like to talk about is the, mo the button we're gonna press the most, which is, which is scoring, when teams score points. So same thing, all the home buttons are here and all the guest buttons are here. Uh, when the home team scores plus one, plus two, or plus three points, we can add it there. If they score a three pointer, you can hit three, or if you're bored, you can hit one, two, three. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You gotta keep in mind too that during a co-rec game, when a female scores a basket inside the three-point arc, it's gonna be three, and if she scores a basket outside of the three-point arc, it's gonna be worth four, so three plus one for her. So another thing to also keep in mind is that when we're doing this, we need to make sure that we are checking our work. So if we see that the, that the guest team scored a basket, we need to mark it immediately on here, and then we need to go up with our eyes and see that the scoreboard shows that it actually went up. So that's very important because the score is gonna be the biggest part that's gonna kinda of give us uh, trouble throughout the game just to make sure we got it right. So the board is more for the refs and everybody on the court to know what's going on. So just in summary real quick, we learned how to set the main clock by hitting the set main clock, enter it in, and hit the enter button. And we can do that with any time. And then we also learned how to add the score for each team and add the team fouls for each team. Another thing I'd like to go over is if we accidentally press too many points, there's a minus button for each team for the score, and there's a minus button for each team for the foul count. So just because we did it doesn't mean we can't take it back. If we put up three and it wound up being just a two, we can just take one back easily just like that. So that's how that's gonna work with the scoring and the fouls. The next part of the video I'd like to go over is starting and stopping the clock. So as I mentioned earlier, we set the clock to 20, and then when the game starts and when the, when the play begins, we're just simply gonna hit start. And we wanna verify up on the scoreboard that the clock has started. Now just remember, with intramural sports rules, the clock only stops in the first half if there's a timeout or an injury timeout. In the second half, it only stops if there's a timeout, injury timeout, or in the last two minutes of the second half if the score is 15 points or less. So otherwise, they're not gonna be worrying too much about start and stop. However, we need to be ready for the start and stop in the last two minutes of the second half. So obviously, we start it, we let it go, we wanna confirm it's going, and we simply just hit stop when we need to stop the clock for any kind of issue. If for some reason we let the clock go to like 10 seconds too long, we remember, so say it's, it shows 1927, and say we should have stopped it at 1937, we can simply go back to set main clock, go 19, 37 and that's wrong I did that wrong so we need to make sure that we enter the there's gonna be a zero after it because it's because we have tenths of a second so it's gonna show on here that shows tenths of a second so it's gonna be 1937 and we'll put the zero in there on here to show tenths of a second click enter and boom as you can see it's 1937 up there so that's how we enter time and stuff so Start and stop is gonna be big just in the last two minutes of the second half. We need to constantly have our hands on these two buttons to let them know. I also wanna talk about the use of the horn. The horn is used uh, to signal substitutes that are waiting at the table to sub in. Prior, uh, and they, remember, they can only sub in during a dead ball. But we signal the horn to let, let the officials know uh, that this is going to happen. The big rule here is we're never gonna hit the horn during a live ball. 
<clears throat> when in doubt, if it's live ball or dead ball, don't blow the horn, because when they hear the horn, everybody stops playing. So it's gotta be a dead ball, out of bounds, a foul, something, and then we're gonna hit the horn, and that's gonna let them know that we have subs. That's probably the only time that we're gonna actually hit the horn um, when the clock stops and starts at the end of the half, it'll actually make an automatic horn and noise. Uh, so that kind of touches the start, stop, and horn. I also want to talk about the use of this possession arrow right here. So as we talked about in training, if there's a jump ball or to start the second half, the team who did not get the ball last will get the possession. So we're not going to use the possession arrow on the scoreboard, we're just going to use the possession arrow out here. So remember, this is showing exactly what it shows out in front, so the arrow's pointing that way on both sides. The arrow's gonna point towards the team's direction that they're going. So if, if, if the white team is sitting to our left, but they're going to our right in the first half, we're gonna point to the direction that their team is going in the first half, okay? So that's how that's gonna work. Now we're gonna talk more about how you can keep it on your form here, but that's kinda how that works. All right, so we talked about adding the score, adding the foul, starting and stopping the clock. This is pretty easy. I do recommend each night you come out here and re-familiarize yourself with the clock before we begin. So the next aspect, and we're gonna move the camera over, the next as aspect of the whole thing is that you're actually gonna be sitting here and you're going to have to be keeping a running uh, total of the score, of the team foul counts, of the timeout shoes on paper, as well as keeping the information on the scoreboard. So this is where it just gets somewhat confusing and difficult at times. In, in other sports, a game manager really can kind of um, walk around and, and maybe talk to the participants and stuff. In basketball, you cannot because you have so much duty to take care of. So I'm gonna start at the very top of the page here with each um, team. So the, so the teams are gonna be listed here, obviously. And then what we're gonna do at this point now is, as you can see, there are five slots for fouls for each person and there are two technical foul spots for each person. So, throughout the game, when there's a foul called, not only are we gonna hit the foul count on the scoreboard for the team, but we're also gonna mark the foul on the number of the person who fouled. So one of the things we do before the game in basketball is we're gonna check everybody in with a, with a certain number that they tell us. And so when the official comes over and says that the foul is on number 23, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna first mark that it's a team foul for him, or excuse me, that is a player foul for him, and that it's gonna be a team foul for him, just like that. So those are the two things we do each time there's a foul, okay? That's the big thing that we're keeping track when we talk about players. We're not keeping track of the player's points, we're just keeping track of the player's fouls. So that's why it's really important to make sure we have everybody's number listed before we begin. So that talks about player fouls and technical fouls. Now another thing we need to keep in mind is even though we're keeping the team foul count on the board, we also need to keep the team foul count in front of us for each half so what we show mirrors what we see on the board. So say we have uh, four team fouls in the first half on the guest. We need to make sure that this four team fouls here echoes exactly the amount of team fouls that we put on the scoreboard up there, which it does as you can see. We have 14 fouls. And we keep track of the team fouls because at seven fouls, we're gonna shoot the one and one bonus, and at 10 fouls, we're gonna shoot the double bonus. So we keep track of that for each, um, each one. It also has the amount of technical fouls you can have in a game. Remember, if we get three technical fouls, the game is over. Now, yes, we're keeping track for each player, but if each team gets three fouls, the game is over. So all that information is right here at your fingertips, and it's tough because you need to mark it and do it on the scoreboard at the same time. Right below it, as you can see, each team gets three timeouts per game. One thing we need to do, no matter when the timeout happens, the clock will be stopped for the timeout, and then simply what you'll do is you're gonna write the time on the scoreboard that it shows that we had a timeout. So if the visiting team called timeout at 1937, we're just gonna mark it like that. So now that we know that they only have two timeouts left, that part's really self-explanatory. The score is something that we need to make sure that we are, this is the most difficult part. We need to make sure that we're keeping the running score at the same time that we're keeping the score on the board. So, if they make a three-pointer, what some people do is they just mark off, okay, they got three. Next one they make, they score two points. Five, then they, there was a foul and they only made one free throw. Like that. Some people, they prefer to circle. All right, they made a three-pointer. They made another three-pointer. They made a two-pointer. Just like that, they, they, they prefer to circle each basket. Whatever you want to do is completely fine, but you need to make sure that your running tabulation here 
echoes what you have on the scoreboard, okay? These two need to be in sync. So there's a lot of focus that needs to be done and you need to be watching each possession as it goes up and down. Just like football, we have the first half and second half scores and we have the final score listed here. Sportsmanship rating is the same, captain signature, um, scorekeeper, all the information is the same down here. One thing I forgot to mention is at the top of this sheet we have the home visitor, home visitor. That is our running tabulation of the possession arrow. So we want to be marking back and forth who got the ball, who didn't get the ball, and this needs to be showing exactly what it's going to. Remember, this points to the way that the team is going to be going. The team is going. All right, I know that was a lot of stuff to go over, and I think we did a good job of covering it. What we're going to do now is we're going to show you how to put the scoreboard away properly because we're having some issues with the antennas, and we need to make sure these scoreboards are put away properly. So, obviously what you're going to do is you're going to unplug the scoreboard, okay, and with care you're going to go over to the box and you're going to make sure that the padding is set up as such to have this area here for the folded down antenna. The antenna normally will be standing up. We're going to put the antenna down just like that. We will put the scoreboard in just like that so the antenna rests right in there. We then will strap across the top, strap across the top, and bring the rest of the cord in as such, and then we'll zip it up and go. So that is the training, and each cord obviously is, is designated for each one inside the, the scoreboard. Uh, closet back there. So that's it.